how did the moon form? So this is rather a fundamental question in astronomy. The moon is basically our nearest neighbour, and there's always a question of how it really formed. To this day, we don't quite know exactly how the moon formed, but there are some really good theories. So let's jump right in and see how the moon came to be. So let's go to the formation of the solar system. The young sun is burning bright at the centre of the system, and all of the planets are being formed of the protoplanetary disk. But this is not as simple. It took hundreds of millions of years for the Earth and the Moon and everything else to form. But how exactly did the Moon form? There are basically three theories of how our planet's satellite came to be. There's a giant impact theory, a co-formation theory, and a capture theory. All these theories have a scientific value to it. All of them pretty much make sense, and all of them pretty much match up with all of our observations and studies. Like all of the planets, the Earth was formed from a leftover of the protoplanetary disk of the young Sun. But the early solar system was a very violent place. So it was a sense of, make your planet as big as possible, or simply be destroyed. So let's start off with a giant impact. This is basically that an object crashed into Earth a long time ago, and this created the Moon. This object was known as Theia, and it was a Mars-sized object that collided with Earth. This threw chunks of debris out into space, and it eventually gravitationally bound together, creating the Moon. This sort of formation would explain why the Moon is made up of mostly lighter elements. Basically, the theory states that the material of the Moon could have came from the crust of the Earth, and this would leave the Earth's planet's rocky core rather untouched. The second one is the co-formation theory. So moons can often form at the same time as their parent planet. The material in the early solar system would have drew together through gravity. The formation of the Moon would have formed at the same time as the formation of the Earth, and because it would have formed in the same place, it would have been made out of the same material. This gives a good reason to why the Moon has a very similar composition to our planet, and it would explain the Moon's location. The Earth and the Moon share much of the same material, but the Moon is a lot less dense than our planet, so therefore, it's unlikely that they would have formed out of the same material because the Moon and the Earth don't quite have the same heavier elements, at their cores. The third one is called a capture theory, and this is rather plausible. A great example of this is the moons of Mars, in Phobos and Deimos. These are basically captured asteroids, taken in by the gravity of Mars. So they are technically moons, even though they're not spherical. Under the capture theory, a rocky body formed elsewhere in the solar system could have been drawn into orbit around the Earth. This theory has a lot of weight to it, because not only would the early solar system have a lot of bodies in it, the Earth is the largest planet in the inner solar system, so therefore, it has the largest gravitational field. However though, looking at Mars's moons, we see that they're irregular shaped, and the Moon is rather large compared to its parent planet. In fact, the Moon is the largest Moon in the solar system, compared to its parent planet. The co-formation theory and the caption theory both explain some elements of the existence of the Moon, but they have so many unanswered questions. So the leading theory is the giant impact theory. This seems to cover as much as possible and answers most of the questions. This makes it the leading theory in the formation of the Moon and is the best scientific evidence to show that our Moon was probably once another planet that collided with Earth and coalesced into what we know now as our closest neighbour, the Moon. We hope you have enjoyed this video and for more videos go to freakphysics.com